Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This Vulcan Report is for Take Back Friday, July the 21st, 2017. The time is 25 minutes after 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Looking at a chart of steam, which we've added to the weekly post wave price triggers, I'm also in the process of adding Ripple. You're seeing that this market, for the most part, is a very interesting one. Uh, if you don't know a lot about uh, Steam, uh, they have a website where people post articles and get paid in Steam uh, for those articles. So it's a pretty unique uh, thing. And believe it or not, it is in the cryptocurrency space and does give you reason for paying attention to it. You can see where it's been in a downward uh, trend, and it's been in a bull trend too. But if we go back, you see it didn't get that much going here. Um, for the most part, uh, the market really hasn't, uh, you know, caught what it needs to catch. But I think it's catching on. It's getting more open interest, so it's it's one to look at, one to watch. Currently, we're bouncing off the lows in the steam. We're starting a new. Uh, bull trend locking in this nice um, uh, weekly momentum here, which is a good thing. Although it's below the Kumo cloud, it has a nice bounce. It's getting above those momentum levels that we like to see. Daily momentum is here above the blue line. This blue momentum line. So you have bullish daily momentum as well as weekly bullish momentum. And it's all occurring underneath the Kumo cloud. And it is pulse waving at this point, and it's trying to do what it needs to do. Initial target for this is set around the $2.50 level, maybe a little bit more. I'll give it, um, let's say, 269. I give it 269, all right? That's the initial target. That's right. But that's right at the bottom of the Kumo cloud here. All right. So 269 is the initial target. And depending on if the cloud widens out like it did back in here or not, we'll determine where we go from there. But it is a strong possibility that this market can really get going. And I think we will uh, see a good run toward the. Uh, long-term trend line resistance at 313. So all things being equal, I think we've gotten far away uh, from the mean, and that's going to be a return to the mean. So the mean in this case is 313. All right, that's our um, immediate goal here. Will we go from here? We'll have to see. But right now, uh, being that everything is bearish, your trend lines, or at least these two, short-term and intermediate, are below the Kumo cloud, but the longer term is above the Kumo cloud. So it really hasn't dropped down yet, but this is what we're looking like on the steam. All right, so coming off the lows here, nice technical bounce. First target, initial targets here, bottom of the Kumo cloud. Next one is the trend line resistance at 313. And yes, this one right now is a buy off of the uh, catching the bounce off these lows so that's where we are on this one and i think for the most part this one should hit these goals all things being equal by the end of august we should be marching toward the 350 goal up here by this trend line resistance all right so that's my take on steam okay now moving on to the uh, ethereum and you can see here is also a nice bounce off of the lows. And we have that uh, locked in bullish weekly momentum as well as the locked in daily momentum. And all things being uh, considered, all we need is a close above 210.71. And we should um, be good and have more momentum to carry over into next week and help push prices inside of the Kumo cloud and make a run at this point to the 274.93 uh, 
trend line resistance, and that's here, this orange line here. So, so far, prices are, are on their way reverting back to the mean, and I think we should have interesting uh, targets. So the market should be ranging between the trend line resistance of 274.92 all the way up to around the $310 range. So it's clawing its way back up to its old highs back here above 400 that was done on June the 12th. So it's come off a lot since then. We had a humongous retracement, all right? And now building support here and then bouncing from there. So it's looking good at this point as long as it doesn't run out of steam around the bottom of the Clint, the Kumo cloud, which acts as a strong resistance. You see here we got inside the cloud on a spike, couldn't close inside the cloud, and then managed to collapse from there. So that's where we've been on the Ethereum. Important to note is the strong support and strong resistance zones within the Ethereum. The strong resistance zone is from here, which is uh, 318.89 and 133.81, respectively. Strong resistance, strong support. If either one of these zones in this wide trading range is violated, then powerful uh, pulse wave forces will come into play. All right. If this is violated to the bottom side, there is no telling how low this can go. It can be pushed back down into the sing, you know, the, the double digits, 20 and 30 bucks, if this support is violated. Likewise, if the top side is violated, then you will see a bust busting through the 412.21 level on a close. And that will be the new support. And you won't you'll say bye bye to these to this zone as you march toward the eleven hundred zone. All right, so that is what we're looking at on the Ethereum. And like I said, we have been in a in a in a downward trajectory since those highs. And that has not been corrected yet. Until we see this corrected, the market is still locked in. All right, so that's what we're looking to see when that is going to change. And so far, we have not seen that change. But that's what we're looking forward to with this uh, momentum that's coming into play, both weekly and daily momentum readings uh, are coming into play at this point. So this one uh, is a buy even here as we go back to the mean and we should find some type of resistance around the 274.92 level. Okay, switching our attention now to the Bitcoin, you can see here that we're two bars into the locking in of the weekly bullish momentum, and we're already locked into the daily momentum. All the market needs to do to lock in and carry over momentum into next week would be a close above 2393.12. And it looks like we are far above that and we're going to get that. Uh, Bitcoin is pulse waving it positive at this point. And from where we're sitting right now, uh, we should not have too much of a problem uh, retesting that, uh, that 3000 level. Top side initial resistance right now is at 3100. So between now and the end of August, we should arrive uh, somewhere around at 3,100, all things being equally considered. Uh, the only other issue is that we do have some resistance back here. All right. And that's going to be around the 293660 level. All right. So in the range will be 293660 to 29.62.20. All right, so that's what we're going to be. That's going to be a resistance zone, all right, for the Bitcoin. But nevertheless, uh, this is this is what we're doing. Market's top side, the Kumo cloud, you can see that here. 
So looking good here in the Bitcoin. A lot of people tried to count this out when it was correcting. And now they're seeing people looking stupid. All right, because it is it is rallied from the $21, $2,200 level all the way up to the $2,700 level. All right. That's that's a huge, massive run up. All right. That's massive. And really, if you want to be technical, the market was down here at 1817.73 on July the 15th. And now we're above 2700 on July the 21st. So take with that what you will. But this is where we are. OK, so. We went from here to here in the Bitcoin, here to here. Here, you paid 1817.73 for something. It's worth 27.22.20 today. I would say that's a very substantial return on investment. So with that being said, cryptos ain't going nowhere, man. Cryptos are here to stay. The blockchain is the future, and if you don't like it, so what? It's nothing you can do about it, all right? It is it is in its own uh, space, all right? And it's a direct threat to the current fiat system. That's why the powers to be, the central banks, are trying to co-op this technology, this whole blockchain idea, and put the world's currencies on said blockchain that is controlled and manipulated by the central banks, all right? That's why they're trying to do away with as much as they can and even, I mean, falling short of making it illegal to transact anything uh, in the Bitcoin, but it's failing, all right? They hate anything they can't control. And like I said, there's been so much news, so many things happening flying under the radar, and I, I, I don't have the time and the wherewithal to tackle everything. It's just not humanly possible, and you know, I can't trade and deal with family and uh, run the trading room and do everything, you know, and cover and keep you abreast of everything that's going on behind the scenes. Some things have to give from time to time, and it's just the way it is. Sorry, I can't necessarily make, you know, 10, 15 videos a day. Um, it's hard enough to be consistent to, to do two videos a day, a pre-market post scan and an end of day report. My goal is to do that, to do a pre-market post scan and end of day report. But it's just not always possible. It's just not. That's why you need the weekly post wave price triggers. Because whether or not I'm able to do a video, you have the roadmap at your fingertips telling you what to buy and where to buy it, what to sell and where to sell it, when and if a crash in a market is coming, or when and if a rally in a market is coming. You know everything before everybody else. You even know what stops are going to be ran prior to the market's opening. You know where the stops are and where, what's going to be hit, what's going to run. You get to run the central bank stops. How many people you know can do that? Well, weekly pulse wave price triggers. Don't let the name fool you. Those price triggers are updated daily. Come learn what it's all about. Come see what's up. On a final note, I just want to throw this out here. <laughs> um, you guys, a disruption does not equal a collapse. I repeat, disruption does not equal collapse. So when you see a, a disruption come, and it will come, just understand that the disruption is either planned, meaning almost like a um, a test 
of your emergency broadcast system and or a drill, meaning it's something that's planned, or it's like a cyber attack, which is also a planned attack. All cyber attacks are premeditated. So, again, disruptions are planned. 99.9% of the time, a disruption is planned. Just understand that. Okay? Now, even if it's not a cyber attack, even if it's not a test of your emergency broadcast system, even if it's not a pre-planned drill, understand that if you know that there are, how can we say this delicately, weaknesses within your network and you do nothing to address it, that is akin to a pre-planned takedown because you know at some point the system is going to go down. Likewise, if the roads and bridges are not maintained and you know that they're wearing down and you do nothing to maintain them or to replace those things that can be replaced, that is akin to a planned takedown because you know at some point it's all going to come crashing down. I want to draw out the parallels and the differences between said disruptions versus a collapse. The cause and effect is way more important than the act itself. So you have to do the knowledge to, okay, something happened, but what caused this to happen? Was it something that happened on purpose or is it something that's not happening on purpose? So I'm here to tell you that a planned disruption is underway. This planned disruption will serve many, many purposes and it is going to panic many people. Understand that a planned disruption is far more superior than any kind of cyber attack. Because remember, a planned disruption is something where they can control the narrative. All right? An attack you cannot control. Third parties are involved and they decide when they're going to let you go. But if you plan it and you do it yourself, you're in control of the how, the where, and the when. So prepare yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Prepare yourselves for the planned disruptions where you may or may not be able to actively surf the web, where you may not be able to get access to anything online, electronically speaking. All right. They don't have to have a bank holiday to declare a bank holiday. They don't even have to call it that. They can say that circuits are down and circuits are busy. They can do, call it whatever they want. But just understand that if they have to do this, they will do this to gain political currency. Political currency, in some cases, is more powerful than actual physical currency. They have to stop the crypto space from getting too big for its britches. And if that means closing the banks for a few days, then so be it. They will do that, all right, or even for a few weeks where you don't have access to your money, all right? And then they can blame it on the blockchain people and the cryptocurrency people and make it illegal and outlaw you. And then days or hours or weeks or months later, they roll out their new blockchain <laughs> cryptocurrency technology saying, oh, the, uh, the U.S. dollar is on a, on a blockchain thing and all this other stuff, and your money's more secure now, and blah, blah, blah. This is one of the reasons why they've been bringing down the price of the dollar, because we're trying to compete in a situation, in a space that we can't compete in, all right? Exports, we can't compete. There's no way. So they, they cheapen the dollar a little bit 
took a little bit of air out of it, made people start to panic and say, oh, no, the dollar's losing value. It's plummeting. Even right now, we're at the 93 handle. All right. Remember what I told you. They can afford to do this. They have three full points more to play with. As long as they keep it above 90, they're good to go. All right. It's not too cheap where they can't do the things they need to do with it. They can let it drop to 90. However, a drop below 90, like I told you the other day, once we hit into the 80s handle, now we're at a an alarm bell. All right. That's a dangerous ter the 80s are dangerous territories. All right. Cannot have an 80s dollar in today's age. That's not a good thing. And if it drops to the 70s, that's a red alert. That's crash territory. That's economic collapse and crash territory. All right. So now you know the zones to look for. But as long as the dollar's above 90 on the exchange, they're good to go. They can do what they need to do. There's so much news coming out. There's so much that's been going on. I, I just don't have the time. My, my video will be 40 hours long. All right. I just wanted to show you a few of these crypto charts, let you know what's what so that you can see what's going on. Um, there's just so much going on. It's it, it's <laughs> it's crazy. All right. One other thing I wanted to show you and tell you about. OK. Yes, I know today's Take Back Friday. Mark's pulling back a bit. This is not a sell off, people. It's not even a correction. It's just profit taking for ahead of the weekend. You will know when a sell off is occurring. You want to know why? Because all of your inverse ETFs will be on fire. You don't see that happening today. Your, your inverse ETFs are struggling. They're still in parabolic bear markets. All right. Hitting new lows on the daily. That's not a market correction. All right. Stock market ain't going away. Today's pullback will be bought viciously come Sunday night, Monday morning. All right. So if you missed your positioning in the crypto space, you better get in now. All right. This is your second chance. You missed the best opportunity when it was hitting those lows. And you better get yourself some steam and some ripple and some, you know, and some th uh, Ethereum. If the Bitcoin is a little bit too rich for your blood, you, can, you still got steam and you still got, you know, Litecoin and you still got ripple. All right. Those are the cheapest, the three cheapest three amigos that you can deal with. OK. You still got your Litecoin, you got your Ripple, you got your Steam. Jump on those, and then you can build up to some Ethereum and some Bitcoin, okay? So, yeah, the little man, the little guy can play too, all right? Get in there. Make some money, all right? And remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This Vulcan Report is for Take Back Friday, July the 21st, 2017. The time is 25 minutes after 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Looking at a chart of steam, which we've added to the weekly pulse wave price triggers, I'm also in the process of adding Ripple. You're seeing that this market, for the most part, is a very interesting one. Uh, if you don't know a lot what it needs to catch, but I think it's catching on. It's getting more open interest, so it's, it's one to look at, one to watch. Currently, we're bouncing off the lows in the steam. We're starting a new uh, bull trend, locking in this nice um, uh, weekly momentum here, which is a good thing. Although it's below the Kumo cloud, it has a nice bounce. It's getting above those momentum levels that we like to see. Daily momentum is here above the blue line. This blue momentum line. So you have bullish daily momentum as well as weekly bullish momentum. And depending on if the cloud widens out like it did back in here or not, we'll determine where we go from there. But it is a strong possibility that this market can really get going 
and I think we will uh, see a good run toward the uh, long-term trend line resistance at 313. So all things being equal, I think we've gotten far away uh, from the mean, and that's going to be a return to the mean. So the mean in this case is 313. All right, that's our um, lot about uh, STEAM. Uh, they have a website where people post articles and get paid in STEAM uh, for those articles. So it's a pretty unique uh, thing. And believe it or not, it is in the cryptocurrency space and does give you reason for paying attention to it. You can see where it's been in a downward uh, trend and it's been in a bull trend too. But if we go back, you see it didn't get that much going here um, for the most part uh, the market really hasn't uh, you know momentum and it's all occurring underneath the Kumo cloud and it is pulse waving at this point and it's trying to do what it needs to do initial target for this is set around the two dollar and fifty cent level maybe a little bit more I'll give it mm, let's Say 269. I give it 269. All right. That's the initial target. That's right, but that's right at the bottom of the Kumo cloud here. All right. So 269 is the initial target. 